uh, places. Uh, eventually landed at Colton Gray. Okay. Um, yeah, started there as a, as a line cook. Uh, eventually worked my way up to sous chef. Eventually chef de cuisine. Um, started their charcuterie program, their whole animal butchery, and really kind of uh, took that and kind of ran with it. That's something that I'm very passionate about, kind of making my own cured meats and butchering whole animals. I remember that spot. I thought it, I thought it was really good. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the, the walking bridge off uh, Platt Street down and there. And then and then they opened up like a speakeasy. Yeah, yeah the speakeasy downstairs uh, was Saint Ellie, and yeah. then attached to that up the stairs was uh, beyond the charcuterie shop where I had this massive curing chamber, lakes of prosciutto, sausages, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, really, it sucks really to see awesome that place. place go. Yeah, it happens with kind of all all restaurants. They have a very uh, they, yeah they they have a little bit of shelf life and you know they aren't really meant to last forever. The restaurants that have been like you know the institutional places people call those places right. that have been open for decades. I just like marvel at them like how they keep 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 it going. <laughs> I'm curious as that, too. Like, some of those restaurants that have been open for, like, hundreds of years, especially, like, in New York, you know? Yeah. It's just... I mean, if for Denver's sake, if you're looking at the Buckhorn Exchange, it's not I love Buckhorn. the best fucking steak. Right? It's not. Like it survives. It's it's, like, the, it's, it's it's the experience. It's the experience. That's kind of the principal thought, and that is you're not going expecting the best of the culinary experiences. Right. You're going for something right. else, which... I don't know when I joked about Peter's being here since 85, the only experience you get is like he yells at you. <laughs> yeah. so I'm not sure if that's actually a real thing. But it is weird. Like we spoke with somebody recently on um, last week's episode. And it's, you know, like with the turnover of restaurants and things of that nature, it's like these newer restaurants are going about it with a different methodology or ethos than those that were restaurants that we see that are closing at 15, 20 years old. Just from how you approach the hiring process all the way down the line. You know, oh, yeah. You operate on a day-to-day basis. No, the, the restaurant model has absolutely changed um, since the even kind of pre-pandemic there was a lot of kind of changes happening and then boom, yeah getting you ready getting ready to pop and then pandemic came and the bubble popped and a lot of people had to adapt and kind of pivot and and rebrand and rethink what a restaurant is and what it could be the kind of old formulas weren't there it wasn't an, an option to do what you have been doing for years and years and a, and a formula that, that worked for you. It's not, it was, yeah, something new, but restaurant people, chefs, they're adaptive. Right. You know, we can, you know, pivot I think, pivot. Yeah. And that's kind of the time when you and I became friends. Yeah. It was pandemic times when you had to pivot, but we, we mentioned earlier about the food, the cooking school, you always had to pivot yep. So, so I mean, I guess like how how did you get into southern southern food? Southern food uh, definitely have roots in the south. Um, grandmothers from Georgia. My mom was be you know born in Georgia, Savannah. Um, Grandfather's from Kentucky. Spent some time in yeah, in the South. F- f- yes, yeah. we we know we know how to fry shit very very well. And uh, yeah, so it's definitely something that I always had a passion for, kind of in my roots. Florida is kind of the the bastard child of the South. People are like, oh, very you're from true. Florida? No, you aren't. You aren't a true Southerner. But it has its it, its merits. It's not it's not perfect. But um, yeah, something I was really passionate about and started digging into it a little more and finding you know old recipes i was like oh yeah my grandfather used to talk about this all the time like this is the shit like it's awesome and um when we decided my wife and i katie uh decided to open our own restaurant uh we wanted it to kind of be a tribute to the south uh she's from texas so southern roots kind of uh all over the place and it was something we you know, we're trying to come up with the idea, you know, what does Denver have? There's like a few really good soul food spots. A lot of them are now closed, unfortunately. Um, and 
I yes. know. God damn it. Yeah. So damn it. I'd <laughs> cry to go to lunch just one day. One one more day. Yeah. Yeah. Just just one more. Just their whole situation there. Anyways. Ah, tearing up right now. Um. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of like definitely incorporate the South and kind of a little bit of our history. And I'm not you know, saying I'm like, oh no, every, absolutely everything about it, but it's something that I'm passionate about and loved. Right. And, um, leading up to the opening of Julep, um, my wife and I took a road trip through the South, kind of hit everywhere, doing research, kind of picking people's brains, asking people's questions. Um, and what we learned is everyone is very proud of what they have in their own particular area and wanted to kind of showcase and highlight that. Um, so we ended up opening Julep, a uh, great southern spot in Rhino. Uh, it was our first kind of go at a full restaurant of our own. Um, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, it, it fun, fun is a... Don't think too hard. Fun, fun is a little... Yeah, the loose fun, loose fun. Um, yeah, and and we had a great time. Like Julep was a great thing, and yeah, we were I open for for almost three years. Um, Those yeah, were good. Kind of open at that other end of Rhino that was still under development. We had a, it's a spot. Oh, it's that, uh, Greenwich. Greenwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. Yeah, there, there's that that area. There's that like part of Rhino that it's it's finicky. I feel like it. It was definitely finicky when we first opened. The day we opened, uh, the construction started across the street for now. What is that huge condo that takes up the um, the whole block? So there was a construction site across from us for the first year and a half we were open. Um, and it was kind of still kind of underdeveloped, kind of further yeah. down on Rhino. Great kind of bustling area. As soon as people started walking, they were like, oh, it kind of looks like it's still construction site down here. Um, there, there was a uh, yeah. construction sites are great for business. Yes, they. Yeah, that was a that was a whole thing. Um, you know, and just this kind of comes with uh, the pivoting. Oh, Denver's allowing, you know, people to have patios in the street and closing down roads. And it's like, cool, whatever you have to do to, you know, make your your business work. Um, but, yeah, and then, you know, we were open, successful, a lot of great accolades, had some great fun. Um, pandemic hit and uh, kind of the fun, uh, the fun stops. Uh, we talked about pivoting and kind of changing things up, um, kind of the carry out takeaway food back when we couldn't serve people inside the restaurant at all. A lot of it was kind of the, you know, restrictions put on us by our, our local government, like, yep, no, you know, in service dining. And we're like, okay, not really our formula. We weren't <laughs> trying to be the, the, the takeaway restaurant, you know, of Rhino. Um, a lot of the stuff we were trying Curbside, to, bro. Curbside to go. Yeah. No, that Chili's wasn't, does it. Yeah, and they do it <laughs> well, I guess. I'm just, I'm but just fucking with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Starts as a four and you get home like, it's a three. Yeah, <laughs> this meal was supposed to be enjoyed like hot, not like steam convected on the way. Yeah, yeah. And that was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but from that, kind of the idea of uh, Pirate Alley Po' Boys kind of popped up, one of those pivot things. Um, what is a food that travels well, that's easy to make, that people can go with it? Oh, Po' Boys, sandwiches. Hell yeah, let's let's do that. So, um, Seems more, they, more nimble. Like you can move, you could relocate, you can do all sorts of stuff yes, with that kind of idea. Yes, it's very, as we learned, uh, it's a concept that you can kind of plug into where, wherever you are and, and make it work. Um, yeah, we did it for a little at Julep. Yeah, I don't fries. really... It was, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had green tomato fries for a boy, and I was like, you fuckers gotta get over here. <laughs> and then they started doing that exclusively, like I said, in Jump Valley. And, uh, <laughs> It was just, it was drop dead. It was, it was wonderful. The bread, 
reminded you of that light camera from home. And yep. so it wasn't just like, oh, the nostalgia, you know, or the thoughts of the Cajun country. Because they do have great gumbo, but it was also the creativity of bringing a classic dish and like kind of revamping it in different ways. So was it duck leg crab cake or duck leg cake? Uh, for the fro- frog, frog leg, leg cake. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Like Same thing. Yeah. yeah. But I was on the right <laughs> you, you said legs and named some animals. It was, uh, was cake, yeah. Was crab too, but I meant frog legs. Yeah, it was, it was this, in the style of crab cakes, but it was frog legs. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was fucking... You had a lot of this stoner ingenuity or, or, you know, I'm stuck inside like the rest of America. Let's fuck around and find out. Yeah. Uh, how did we come up with... Oh, po' boys are perfect for it to go, but what are we going to film with that makes Colorado enjoy them? Because we know that not all Southern food translate. Late, like you mentioned, with the, the demise of a lot of quality Cajun or soul food restaurants here in Colorado. Yeah, totally. I definitely wanted to kind of pay respects. You always want to do that with kind of a uh, food trend. There's some things that you just you don't fuck around with. There's yeah. some things that like, oh, I'm not... A lot of people try to chef up dumb shit, and then they put it on the plate, and it's like so far away from what the original was. Like, and you fucked it up. Like, yeah, I can't even tell. yeah, no, you, you fucked it up. Like, why are you? Why are you just? Keep, it was, it's been that way for a reason. It's been keep around it for, for that. Keep it very simple. Keep it approachable, but still like put your own little spin on it within reason. Don't go too far outside the box unless like outside the box is your thing and like everything but you're nailing it and it's like ah yes this is for is a reason yeah yeah but the Cubans, right? <laughs> yeah. The Cubans, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I meant to say. I'd love it. You, you do it well, and it starts with the bread all the way down to the basic ingredients. Yeah. And so, what are some things that we can look forward to with this new rendition of Pirate Alley? Yeah, this new rendition. Um, we're in a space, the deli out front of the space, um, all electric equipment. It's not, there was a deli here previously years ago, um, but it's not a full on commercial kitchen with a big hood and gas lines and stuff. It's electrical equipment, so I don't have the big deep fryer that I had at Julep or at the back of Stir. Um, so not as fry heavy. Um, the fried shrimp po' boy, a lot of people are fucking pissed that it's <laughs> that it's gone, and rightfully so, because it was, it was goddamn delicious. So, so when I, are we going to get this fryer back? <laughs> so I'm going to give them the one we bought. But it fucking literally shorts out everybody's walls. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, it pulls every bit of you. It's like the bad guy in Iron Man. Start a GoFundMe yeah. for those people and get them to get you a get conventional. I know it's a TV yeah, process. No, it, no, yeah, it, it, it keep, yeah, it keeps it greasy. Okay, I'm sorry I brought yeah. that up. My bad. Fuck fried shrimp. Yeah. It's, it's fine, and I have plans on bringing it back in a limited capacity based on how we can fry in this space there's not ever going to be a two basket commercial deep fryer right. in this space it's not happening but i make other good sandwiches as well oh, and <laughs> um, like so, what oh let's talk about the shrimp one then let's okay off with yeah the sexy so for those that don't know um Style barbecue shrimp. Mm. It's got some lather, ketchup, <laughs> brown sugar bullshit. Nah. This is a, a baked or sometimes I guess tossed uh, shrimp that is it's just butter, mush, lemon, some cracked pepper, and then you just fuck it up with bread. Yep. It's so goddamn amazing. Yes. And I'll let him take it from there, but that's what Nola loves. No, yeah. Is. New Orleans style barbecue shrimp. Uh, if you have never experienced it, please go to Mr. B's when you're down there. Do yourself a favor. It is goddamn delicious. A lot of um, butter. Lot so much. It's it's but it's like a Worcestershire Burr Blanc is New Orleans style <laughs> barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> I knew the shrimp bathed in it, so I was like, technically, it's gonna have a little bit of pizzazz. It's just like it's like you're like. 
think it's like communion mixed with your baptism all at once. So like 